So, Waves has a family of plugins, which they appear to be adding to over time, called Magma. The Magma family emulates the tones of sought-after expensive tube gear from the boomer days of recording, and from the looks of their GUIs, they're hinting towards the Gates and Bill Putnam Universal Audio stuff. These plugins look like they'd be at home inside of Sun Studios, which could possibly also be said of me. The idea for this video is to see how far I can get with just the Magma plugins, which currently consist of a tube channel strip, a saturation emulator called BB Tubes, and Magma Springs, a collection of seven different types of spring reverb. There's also a plugin called Lil Tube, but its features are redundant in the other plugins. Today, I'm going to test these tools on a mix for my song Garmin Bosia, a word taken from the show Twin Peaks. I haven't watched any videos on this subject yet, and I haven't tried any of these tools either. All I've done so far is read the manuals, so this should be fun. Okay, so I've spent some time getting to know these plugins, and I now have the mix to a point where I'm ready to talk about them. Like I said, I used the Magma plugins almost exclusively, but I did use the parametric EQ inside of Logic when I did need more precision. It's just a stock EQ, so everybody should have something like this inside of their DAW. I was tempted to reach for a tape emulation or some other kind of specialized tool at points, but I resisted and stayed as true as possible to the goal of this video. So here's the full mix session. First, I'm just going to play back the intro and the first verse with all of the plugins on, and then I'll play back a small section with all of the plugins completely off. Too many roads for too little time to find the sweet. Okay, so that was with everything on. Now I have a different session loaded where I bypassed all of the Magma plugins and replaced them with simple gain plugins, which compensate for any volume loss when I bypass the plugins. So you're, you'll be hearing everything back at the same level, just with no processing. Too many roads for too little time to find the sweet. Too many roads for too little time to find the sweet thing. Okay, let's go back to the full production. Okay, so let's go over these plugins a little bit. We have the BB Tubes plugin, we have the Channel Strip plugin, and we have the Spring Reverb. Let's start with the good. They have very fast load times and very responsive GUIs. The controls just work. The numbers don't disappear while you're working or anything like that. They're very, they're very quick to respond. Now, these things might seem small, but as anyone who's worked on a full production knows, sitting there and waiting 10 seconds of time for a plugin to load or having interface issues while you're trying to tweak something, that can really kill creativity and you just won't get as much done and it won't be as fun. Number two, the CPU usage is absolutely excellent. As you can see, I've got a big production here, lots of elements, and like I said, I used it on every audio track, and if not there, then definitely on a bus. And although I did freeze some of the tracks, 
in order to make this video, I wouldn't have had to otherwise. But right now I have the camera running, I have my screen recording software running, and I had to free up some CPU. But Waves has a way of just really optimizing their plugins and making them very efficient on your processor. And just in case you're wondering, I have an i9-11900K in this computer. And if I'm doing a video about Acoustica audio or something like that, where the CPU usage is a lot heavier, I actually have to fire up my server computer, which I have connected through ethernet and run most of the Acoustica audio plugins off of that just to be able to record. So it's a very welcome shift in terms of workflow, at least. Continuing with the good stuff, the plugins sound great for what they do. The EQ section on the tube channel strip sounds really nice for making broad brush strokes as opposed to clinical surgical maneuvers. But if you pair that with a more precise EQ, like the one that everybody has inside of their DAW, then you can use the coloring aspect of the tube channel strip in conjunction with the more precise moves that a parametric EQ like this can offer. The one knob gate and expander is really impressive. So for instance, here I have my bottom snare drum mic. Let me just solo that out. And you can see that I use the gate on it. There's a little switch here to switch from expander to gate. So let's take that all the way down. So now the gate's doing nothing. You can really hear that kick drum interfering with the microphone. Turn the gate on. And for a one knob gate, that's really nice. The same can be said about the compressor, just being one knob. And it has two different modes controlled by this little switch here. The first mode has a longer attack and a slower release. So it lets a lot of that transient through and then holds the tail of the audio longer. And if you move over to the smash option, it has a quick attack and a quick release. So it's good at controlling transients and then quickly releasing the tail of the audio. Now, what I found myself doing a little bit of the time was actually using both of these compressors by calling up two instances of the plugin. So here I have my acoustic guitar track and the first instance, I'm doing a little bit of EQ stuff and I have the first option of the compressor. The second instance, I'm not doing anything except using the smash option on the compressor. So the first one is leveling the performance a little bit. And then the second one after that is just catching some transients that got through and it's calming those down a little bit. So here's that. Now you'll notice that I'm not hitting either of them hard at all. This performance didn't require that. But when they're both working together, they're most likely imparting about four decibels of compression. Again, the first one just leveling things off and the second one controlling those peaks that are getting through. So when you're doing this, you gotta watch out for low end buildup, meaning that opening up an instance of the tube channel strip, it imparts its own tone without even doing anything. So see here, I have plugin doctor open and I called up the tube channel strip and without doing anything at all, this is the EQ curve that it imparts on the audio. So you can see just by doing nothing at all, it imparts a considerable amount of low end. If you call up another one, it's gonna do the same thing over. Leaving plugin doctor open, it gives me a good opportunity to talk about the EQ section. Like I said, it's a simple three band EQ you have a high shelf, which starts at 2.5K, which is a little low. I would have liked to see another option, maybe at 10K. However, that 10K shelf is actually a part of the BB Tubes plugin. So maybe that's why they didn't include it here. The middle band, it has very broad boosts. And if you choose to cut the frequencies, the further you cut, the more precise the band becomes. So the tighter the band becomes. So you got broad boosts. What starts out as a broad cut eventually turns into a tighter cut. And then it has a pretty broad low end shelf as well. And that's all you get. <laughs> it would be nice to have two middle bands 
But like I said earlier, it's not that big of a deal if you wanna call up another plugin and just use the middle band on that. Okay, jumping back into Logic, the drive section on the tube channel strip, I didn't really use that much. I favored the BB Tubes plugin a lot more for saturation duties. Now, like I said, this one has a shelf at 10K, so you can use it in conjunction with the channel strip. Now, the reason why I chose to use the BB Tubes pretty much exclusively for saturation is because it has the ability to upsample and the channel strip doesn't. This means that you can get rid of the aliasing that can occur especially when you really crank the controls into obvious distortion. It just has a more pleasant sound. So the more I use these plugins, the more I realize that I think the goal is to use them all together. Lately, on my lead vocal, I've been using the Clear Mountain Spaces plugin because it has a really nice emulation of a chamber. I, and I like it so much that I thought I'd really be missing it, especially since I don't usually reach for a spring reverb the moment I think of adding a reverb. I usually want a chamber or a plate. However, I pulled up the Magma Springs on the lead vocal in place of the clear mounting plugin, and this was the result. Too many roads for too little time to find the sweet thing behind the wrongs and rights. Here it is dry. Too many roads for too little time. So I think if you had to, you'd be hard pressed to find a reason to explain to me how that reverb sounds bad in any way. In other words, it sounds pretty awesome. I have Acoustica Audio Silver. Like I said, I have the Clear Mountain plugin and I'm not missing anything. Okay, so I've talked about some good stuff, now some not so good stuff. An automatically gain compensated output would be really appreciated in perhaps a future update. So as you're raising the saturation level, you're also going to be raising the output volume. It would be nice to hear the difference that the saturation adds without also increasing the output volume. Going back to the channel strip, in Logic at least, there's no sidechain input, so I can't use, for instance, uh, the compressor as a ducker. The most obvious use case for this is to take the bass guitar down a few decibels every time the kick drum hits. Can't do that here. Also, the high pass filter leaves a lot to be desired at just 60 or 110 hertz. I know this is an emulation of old tube gear, but having a continuously variable high pass filter up to say 300, 350 hertz, that would just add so much usability to the plugin which, without having to resort to the straight up digital EQ in your, in your DAW or so, you know? Also, there's no low pass filter at all. Again, I get the simplicity of these plugins, but in the springs, for example, you're given a decay time of short, medium, and long, not being able to have specific decay times prevents me from using it as, say, a drum room, for example. I don't know if it's um, an algorithm thing where it would be unpleasant if it was that short. So maybe there's some issues I'm not aware of. Another thing that would be nice it would be nice if I could move these modules around. Suppose I wanted to have the EQ after the compressor. I can't do that. Suppose I wanted to just take the whole signal and drive it hard after all of the processing. You can't do that. I mean, obviously, again, you could call up a separate instance, but it would be nice to have it inside of one plugin. Okay, so I took this as far as I could get it with just the Magma plugins. And then again, like I said, I had to reach for a straight up digital EQ at times, and I also really had to use a separate de -esser. For modern productions, you really can't get away with not having one, especially when you're recording stuff so clean coming in, especially on vocals, you're gonna pick up some S's and some consonants and stuff that you're gonna wanna get rid of. So I have Fire the DS from Acoustica Audio, which is currently my favorite de -esser. I used that when needed. And then of course, um, when I needed a delay, I just used the Simple Waves H Delay plugin, which I've been using for years. But other than that, I pretty much just used those three plugins. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so my final thoughts. Given the extremely light CPU hit that these plugins have, I think they sound really nice. There are some plugins that I can think of that might take an emulation like this to even a higher level when nothing but overall authenticity is what you're looking for. However, those plugins come at a cost, not only when it comes to your CPU, but also your workflow. The Waves plugins, like I said, are very responsive and easy to use to get you where you want to go. And the same can't be said for some other plugins on the market, even though they might be truer representations of the gear that they're modeling. But the fact that I can pull up like 50 of these plugins in a session and I'm not having to worry about resources, freeing up CPU cycles over here so that I can spend them over there, that just makes the whole mixing process more fun when you don't have to worry about stuff like that. Anyways, given the quality of these tools, it'll be really interesting to see where they take this family of plugins. I, for one, would like to see a standalone compressor with maybe a few different emulations inside of it, as well as some different types of reverbs, maybe like a 50s style chamber or something. Also, while Waves does have tape emulations, they are a little bit older, and it would be really cool to have an updated version for this family of plugins. Anyways, I hope that you've gotten something useful out of this video, and if you have, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more stuff. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.